What is good guys, Charles from team COG. Coming to you guys here with another deck profile. And today guys, I'm gonna be showcasing my <laughs> deck profile. And uh, this is a very hard going second list guys. Like I'm currently, I think like five and oh with this list. This list surprisingly has done pretty well. Uh, there's nothing really I would like change in the list to be honest with you, except for like uh, probably like a few cards that I just interchange like for lightning storms and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, guys, so let's just go ahead and, you know, jump into the profile. Okay, guys, uh, quickly before we, you know, continue on, I'd like to give a huge shout out to our sponsors and ways you can support the channel. Uh, go ahead and check the links down in the description below. And uh, if you guys want to help support the channel, use the affiliate link, become a Team CLG member, which would greatly, greatly, greatly help out in supporting the channel. Also, if you guys want to get this beautiful Rally to the Kings playmat, it is also available at the Team CLG store down below. But uh, for our new sponsor of the channel, your playmat has sent me these. I think these are called the Royal Guard uh sleeves right here uh so yeah these sleeves are actually nice i so they're a little bit pricey to be honest with you in my opinion if you're going to spend 40 bucks for sleeves that's kind of a high steep cost however with like double sleeving being available uh you can like you know it kind of like equals out the cost of them you spend the 30 or 40 bucks once and then you get your very own custom sleeves whichever kind you want you can choose from their like already pre-designed sleeves or you can choose from their uh or like you can upload an image which is pretty cool so you can do any of that and then you can just double sleeve them and then you have them for almost life pretty much uh, unless, you know, like something happens. But I've been using these sleeves. I actually forgot to double sleeve them and they've been just like flawless guys. Like they're just really high quality sleeves if you ask me. I, like this is my first batch. I was a little skeptical because, you know, everyone out there is getting sponsored. And uh, but these quality of sleeves, guys, even without being double sleeved is super nice. But anyway, just check them out down in the description below. And if at checkout, use uh, my uh, discount code down below to get 10% off. Help support the channel directly and save you 10% off the sleeves. But without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump into the deck profile and we'll go ahead and round it off here right now. So to start out with guys, we are still playing Triple Crusadia Maximus. Uh, currently guys, I'm really just gonna fly through these. If you are checking out this video, you are probably a Crusadia veteran, so there's no point in me going over these. However, you know, if you're new, just read the cards, I guess. Uh, anyway, so three Crusadia Maximus. Little bit of detail. He lets you do double battle damage. Uh, he's also my favorite card in the since like his inception and his printing in Cybernetic Horizon. Uh, following up, we are playing three Draco. Draco's the recursion from the grave. Triple Arborea. Uh, Arborea here is uh, your tuner if you want to use some cheeky Hulk plays or do some synchro plays. Uh, she's also like the return of the two Dragon Lords. Of course, like you can banish this instead of Crusades getting destroyed, which is pretty cool. Uh, Triple Reclusia. Uh, this card is phenomenal. It is your very high push for going second. Uh, being able to spot removal and stuff like that which is pretty cool uh like i said guys i'm like currently five and oh with this list i straight up brutalized my discord and if you guys are not part of the discord links down in the description down below become part of the discord but uh this could this like yeah he's just really good for going second you know uh so like a conception with the deck is that like the deck struggles to go first now simply because we lost lp god bless its soul uh, we that is not true. We just kind of migrated to like a codebreaker engine, which allows us to put up like Apollosa and allows us to put up like Avermex, which is decent. And sometimes they'll like they'll believe that if you're going second Crusadia, and especially since LP's dead, they're gonna think like you have no going first. So you just put up like a three material Apollosa with an Avermex, and it's like really hard for them to out. But uh, moving on to probably the worst Crusadia, which is three Leonis. So Leonis here is hands down like the worst it does piercing however i've seen a few lists like cut this card back to two and i do not think that is correct do not do that you only lose the game 100 percent if you don't open a crusadia and by cutting this down you lower that percentage by quite a quite a bit in all honesty but uh anyway that's all the crusadia names we play the honorary crusadia is still crown uh this card just gives like the biggest boost in the deck because remember every crusadia link monster Gives, uh, gains whatever it's pointing to, so this is the biggest uh, boost that it can get. And also, this is a an inner disruption you can end on as well when going first. Uh, I have actually learned, like, replaying this deck is you got to do math. Like, that's so, like, people will be like, this deck just go burr and one punch all the time. No, no, no. That's Sometimes that's not the case. Uh, sometimes, like, you have to do the math and see, because a lot of times you will punch for just barely below lethal. And a lot of decks nowadays, if they get that little bit of breathing room, that one little inch, they'll go a mile and come back. And Crusade, you really cannot stop the comeback. Uh, now, if it's in a simplified game state, like Equimax Negate is pretty good at stopping the comeback. So you got to do a lot of math and a lot of calculations and like direct your avenue of play. And I'll showcase how you guys can do that, like going, you know, going forward. Uh, for, for That is it for the Crusadias, actually. So I think it's 15 Crusadias on top of like the one crown. Uh, nothing really I would change in this lineup at all. Like Konami, please give us like a level five Crusadia or like a Crusadia monster that 
All of this Crusading monster has to do, guys, is just say, if you control no monsters, special summon it, and then have the same Crusadia thick claws or the same, like, other summon ability. Like, make that an activating effect, but then, like, make the other effect just be special summon to his own like monster points too that's it guys and like the, as soon as we get that if we get that that right here that will solve so many issues with the deck right off the bat and maybe give us a synchro so we can actually use like arborea as like a tuner which would be amazing uh, i already have like a concept like i'd like to see so konami if you guys are watching this and want to know how to make some crusadia cards you know how to get a hold of me uh so moving on for uh monsters we are rocking the triple paralytic seed uh, this card is phenomenal. Any deck that plays a Link 1 that points down, uh, you should probably play this card. I mean, hands down, guys. Like like I said, you, you should just 100% play this card. It's a free rank 4, free extension. Uh, we are no longer in this list playing the Reflasia package because Reflasia and the Grave Diggers was just an additional tra uh, brick in the deck. And we do not, I repeat, we absolutely do not want to uh, experience that brick at all. But... um. Yep, nothing more can be said about this. Phenazing card, chain block out your Magius, resolve your effects, which is pretty good. Finally, guys, back to the OG spice of the deck. We are rocking four Kaijus. Uh, these are just the four that I choose to play. You should definitely play the win Kaiju. I just haven't got my hands on it, and I don't know how much it is. I think last time I checked, it was like a $6 rare. And boys, the Crusade ain't spitting money out for a $6 rare, you know? But uh, if you do plan to take this to a competitive event, definitely take it to, uh, definitely take it with the win Kaijus. I, however, like my locals has a lot more Tri Brigade than Tri Brigade, uh, what is it? Tri Brigade birds or just Tri Brigade in general with the wind statue. So until I get those, I will not probably take this to my locals, but I have played it on like a few remote dual locals too. So uh, this lineup is fairly good. Like I said, probably just change out the Kai, the Gamma Seals for the Kamungus or just play three Kamungus. No, it's not Kamungus, it's Gadarla. Play three Gadarla and call it good if you fear that matchup altogether. Uh, for the final monster, we are playing. Zero day. Zero day is just in here because zero day allows us to play first and play second just by oh, utilizing the codebreaker engine. Uh, we get to like go first. We get to set up interruptions using the codebreaker in the form of Apollosa, and then by going um, second, we actually put out a lot of damage. We put out lethal with the whole codebreaker setup, which is like I believe over eight thousand. I believe I would have to like do my math correctly, but that is yeah, guys. Math is pretty key in this deck now, if you ask me, because one wrong mix up and give your opponent that little mile to go or that little inch, they will go that mile and you will lose. So uh, moving on to the spells, guys. We are rocking Crusadia spells. We are rocking double Crusadia Sharky. Sharky. I'm learning, guys. I'm getting that German down as I horribly mispronounce that. A Crusadia power, one Crusadia Testament, and one Crusadia Revival or Offschwug. There we go. Uh, so right here, these are like the Crusadia spells you're playing. Uh, the reason, like, I would almost cut this card, guys, but sometimes this card is just like that additional 500 and that ability to attack over every monster is super important. However, this card is just awful to see in your opening hand. I almost rather see Crawler than this card. Uh, so I've thought about cutting this and playing like an additional extender, an upstart goblin. Maybe not really an upstart goblin, maybe like up desires here to like three or something. But it is just kind of needed, I'm not going to lie. Uh, so if you are barely missing like damage and practically once you get to Regulex, that's when the brain starts to go. So you can do math. Uh, you do, do I have damage without revival? Do with revival, do I have lethal? And if the answer is no, you do not have lethal. Even with revival, uh, you grab Testament and uh, Testament just lets you draw. Drawing three is awesome. Drawing four is even better. And that's why Testament is in here. So like when you get to Regulex, um, you, you don't end on Equimax as often as like I would like to, you know, just like. The bills just change. No, you just don't end on Equimax as, as often. You'd rather get to that three material Apollosa. But they are some combo lines that you get to. You can get to like a three Apollosa with an Avermax or a two material Apollosa with an Equimax negate. And it just truly depends on like your hand and everything like that. If you're interrupted, all that fine jazz. Uh, when you start playing the deck, you'll you'll notice what hands lead you which route. And uh, you just go from there. But that's what Testament's in here for. Testament is when you sit there and you do the math and you're like, okay, even with Crusade Revival, I don't have lethal. I need to be able to do something for a follow-up. So that is where you have Crusadia Testament and you search Crusadia Testament off of the Regulex. You then end up just whacking over one of your opponent's monster for a sustainable amount of damage, drawing three, drawing four, drawing two, whatever you need to get the additional resources so you can keep keep up the good fight, you know? But that is it for the Crusadia spells. And of course, just so in case you don't know, Crusadia Power here just says your Crusadia monsters are unaffected by card effects except their own. Going second, this is just good because it lets your normal summon stick if, as long as they do not negate the summon. And it just allows you to push through problematic negations, problematic cards, traps, etc. So uh, you almost never use Testament over here for its effect that says your opponent can't respond to Crusade effects. Uh, 
not that often because like it, it's just power's just better they like there's different there's too many interactions like that can still interact even if you use that effect but moving on rocking two pot of desires uh, this is the only outside of crusadia testament this is the only draw power you have like if crusadia testament just said draw in general like it'd be 10 times better we'd never play this card however you have to do battle and destroy an opponent's monster before you get that draw whereas pot of desires is a free plus one you can smack down and then you know like that is also why we're playing three of every crusadia if you banish like the one ofs, like you are playing like Revival, uh, you are playing like Testament, Revival, Crusadia Crawler, and like Codebreaker Zero Day. But like all those cards you really don't care about if you banish, except for Zero Day. In hindsight, like you can like combo off with Zero Day, then Pot of Desires, entirely up to you. Uh, double Hatronade and one Feather Duster. So Hatronade should definitely be Lightning Storm, 100%. Uh, it's just your boy here is uh, balling on a budget. You know, this deck is already budget, might as well represent. Hatronade gets the job done. Uh, the only thing Hatronade does not solve that Lightning Storms does solve is those like continuous floodgates, such as there can be only one summon limit. Uh, that is the only time that this uh, Lightning Storm is superior to Hatronade. So definitely, definitely, definitely uh, trade these out for Lightning Storms if you have them. I will be probably be trying to pick up Lightning Storms this weekend at locals, uh, given if they're for the right price. Moving on, Monster Reborn, Succession, and Call by the Grave. Uh, nothing more can be said. Surgible off a crawler and call by the grave, of course, is, you know, we'd play three of this card if we had it. Not much more can be said. You know, practically, if you see this card, you practically secure your, you put your opponent practically on, um, better have imperm, kind of. And then even if they do have imperm, you have Crusadia Testament or Crusadia Power you can open to. So it like really, uh, puts your opponent on better have two hand traps. But you know, there, there's a lot of hand traps being played in the format. So they're more than likely going to have two. So you got to be able to push through them for the final cards we are rocking three infinite impermanences uh, why am i playing infinite impermanence and not any other hand trap it was because my personal opinion hand traps are being just swarmed into the meta because like you need to play a bunch of hand traps so you're going to try and water down your engine and in theory you just need two crusadias to otk but like you'd rather have extenders to play through hand traps play through disruptions rather than like play them i guess and that's just my opinion even all the decks i play like Ash is good and probably the best hand trap in the format, but Ash doesn't stop decks anymore. Like, doesn't stop the best decks, so you need two hand traps. And then sometimes even two hand traps don't do anything. I'd rather play, like, high-impact blowout cards, and uh, that's, like, Dark Ruler No More, but we're not playing Dark Ruler No More in here simply because, of course, no battle damage, whereas, like, Impermanence is the best high-impact hand trap that we can play that is versatile if we're forced to go first or go second. So, like, it can't be called by the grave. You can't, like, they can't uh, triple tactics this. So you're just able to smack this down as a hand trap. And then when you're forced to go first, you can set it as a disruption and everything. But that is why we are playing the Infinite Impermanence. And then the card that I could not cut, even though we are going second, is Crusadia Crawler. Because just in case you do get hit with those rogue matches uh, that make you go first, you do want to have the ability and have access to it just because it is a rec follow-up recursion. It is a Crusadia monster. This card is just pretty solid. And then in like some really, really awful games, setting this, making a Magius, then during your opponent's turn, activating the Crawler, summoning it, getting like chain two, chain one to get those like succession and then like another Crusadia monster for the follow-up is pretty good. But that's it for the main deck, guys. I believe it's 40 cards. Uh, so yeah, not much more can really be said here. I will just jump on into the extra deck here. So the extra deck, guys, we are back on the triple Magius. Uh, Magius here is the best one. You, you could get away with playing two. However, I have found myself needing the three because sometimes like when you have to climb up and make Avermax, uh, Avermax plus power sometimes can win games, but you need to have that extra Magius to do it. And then you just want to have that other one in the extra deck in case you need to like link climb into Echo Max to push for that one punch damage. Uh, so, but there definitely is a flex spot. You can get away with two, but I recommend three. But if you need to make space or want to play like uh, Trap Tricks or Flasia, maybe take out like one of the uh, impermanences or like take something out so that you can play that to be protected from Nibiru. Uh, definitely you could cut a Magius for that. Uh, one Spatha. Spatha is still in here even though we're not playing the uh, Guard Dragon engine. Uh, simply because the versatility to be able to move your opponent's monster over one zone. So then your Echo Max will point to it. But most importantly, uh, we have the ability to make uh, Apollosa hard. Like hard make Apollosa in this deck. So this is how we do it is with Spatha. We just has Spatha here, summon, move, summon, app for three. Uh, that kind of just pushes our opponent to like, it pushes our opponent to be forced to like, you know, rock us where we, if we have like the potential play to play through it, which is kind of nice. Uh, it actually came up in one of my testing matches. He, he, I thought he had the rock, but he didn't have the rock. So I've made Apollosa 
and he was like, well, that's pretty cool. I didn't know the deck could do that. And I was like, it's not on the fifth summon, but it puts my opponent on like, I have, you know, like count the monsters. I'm getting ready to make app. You better rock me now. And if they do rock you, you just turn the token into Link Spider, special the Draco from your hand and attempt to combo the best way you can. Or maybe you're trying to play through the rock while going second. Oh, I almost forgot. Regulex, I almost forgot like the main, the main guys. Wow, shame on me. A Regulex here just searches your spell and traps. Not much more can be said. Uh, the man, the myth himself, Echo Max, me incarnated. If I was not already Infernoble Knight Emperor Charles, this would be me, like, hands down. Uh, Echo Max here is the bomb. This card is just an amazing boss monster. I wish we could end on it more consistently. It's just, it's like, Echo Max is like the most strongest interaction you can end on, period. But he needs to have backup. Like, he is good by himself, but he needs to have backup. And that's where I've kind of thought about playing, like, Rescue Cat in the deck again because strikers are coming back because that one engage guys and uh just being able to like i have like that theory of better habit you know so if you play rescue cat rescue cat can get you to like nature of beast you just have a lot more versatility with that like yes you're more susceptible to hand traps but if you are playing rescue cat you do have the ability to you will play like gamma to protect the cat so it does give you a little bit more hand trap versatility than um what you're playing now and rescue cat would just allow you to get like a one card combo which is really what the deck really kind of needs but finally, a Mech Knight Crusadia Avermax. This card is remarkable. This is kind of part of our new ending board, sadly. I would rather it be Equimax, but it has to be Avermax. You're trying to end on Avermax or Avermax down here with an Apollosa. So then, like, your opponent can't just, like, bait out two negates and try to ba battle into the Apollosa. They have to attack into Avermax, and they are going to forget that. You can read them this card. You can read them and tell them directly what this does. You can tell their brother what this card does. You can show them what this card does, and they'll still go battle phase and try to attack in the Apollosa. And you just simply got to go, uh-uh-uh, got to attack Avermax, and they just cry. But that is it for the Crusadian Monsters. Not much more can be said. Uh, moving on to the Codebreaker engine. We rock in these three Codebreakers. Uh, for those who don't know, this summons a Codebreaker from Hand Deck or Grave, kind of like a warrior-like Elpy. Uh, this guy summons back two Codebreakers from the Graveyard, so you normally use this to summon the code, the Zero Day from the deck. This, this guy, Zero Day and Swordsman make Berserker. Berserker brings back Swordsman and Zero Day. And then you have like all these like materials that you can go into like Apollos and stuff. Uh, Draco Master of the Tinny is only played for the downward pointing arrows in those combos where you don't make Apollos up here. So you just like take Regulex and one of your random link monsters or your random extenders, turn it into this, and then you have the zones to do your Codebreaker combos beneath it. So that is the only reason we play it. The ability to not be destroyed by uh, battle with an effect monster is kind of eh. I mean, it can like hold, hold down in some simplified game states, but like is not exactly the best effect. You don't play any normal monsters to use the second effect either. Uh, moving on, one Apollosa. This is part of the new win condition. I kind of do not like, like, I like this card because I believe, like, this card is straight busted, but then I don't like that this deck now, this is, like, one of the only, like, ending boards this deck can kind of go for, but beggars can't be choosers, right? A Link Spider to... Tell the rock to go get lost. Even if you can't continue on, you turn that token into this ultimate reveling spider and you just flex on your opponent madly. Uh, Ling Kribo, not Link, Ling Kribo. Uh, you use this when you're going second when you open Paralytic Seeds. Since you're not playing Rap Tap Tricks Rafflesia, you just turn one of the you turn the Ling Kribo, one of the Paralytic Seeds into a Ling Kribo. God, I'm stuttering with my words today. I apologize, guys. And then you just have that ability to like stop those floodgates when they fire off, which is pretty nice. And then we are playing Nightmare Unicorn. We can two. We have a two-card Echo Max. We have a two-card Unicorn. So I mean, it just allows us to shuffle away problematic monsters. And then like you can like put this up here, and then you can shuffle something back, and then like you can like Special Crusadia here, turn it into Magius, and then you have Avermax that way, uh, which does come up. Uh, the only rank four we are playing or still playing is Abyss Dweller. Just Paralytic Seed, especially when you know what you're playing against, you know, like you're going into that all-important game three, you got to know like the best win condition. Dweller alone can just win games, so it's good to have it so like, you have the ability to, you know, tell your opponent no. Uh, but anyway, guys, so that is it for the profile. Please comment down below what you guys think. I know like some people, like I'll go and address some things. Uh, some One of the people on the Facebook page, the Crusadia Facebook page, asked about Shade Brigandine. Dean. I haven't got around to replying to him, so here's my reply if you watch my videos. Uh, if Shade was an effect monster, I would 100% play it as an extender, but you have to, like, summon it, then link it off into Link Spider, and then if they rock you, you don't have the ability to play through it with the because you already used your Link Spider. And then uh, outside of that, uh, the the engage package, uh, I would think I was thinking about playing that because, you know, if you think about it, power plus, like, Widow Anchor plus Avermax would be pretty good, uh, and so on and so forth. Like, even with uh, Widow Anchor plus Equimax within the gate, as soon as Equimax tributes, you have Widow Anchor live. 
I, but I think if I was to play any other like secondary engine in the deck outside of Paralytic Seed, I would probably play Rescue Cat. Hands down, I would play the Rescue Cat. And uh, the reason I say that is because you'd be able to put up better going first boards, and you'd be able to put up some, and be able to still punch through with the Rescue Cat because you have a one card combo. You get to play more high impact hand traps and stuff like that. Uh, you know, high risk, high return. But this Crusade's always been about uh, you know yeeting it for the yeeting it for the prize. So uh, anyway, guys, please. This is stay safe, stay healthy. This is Charles from Team COG signing out.